All right, this is Big Boss from Foxtown Woods Ball, coming to you from Fort Lauderdale, and now, as I've probably mentioned in other videos, I am a budget baller, and with that being that, a, what a budget baller is, for those who don't know, is a player who's able to play on a limited budget. That means if they can't afford equipment and whatever gear they do have, they'll learn to improvise it and adapt it for what the situation is needed for. In that case, let's just say you can't afford any Molly gear, like any of these Molly mag pouches for your pods or your magazines or anything like that. You can actually improvise equipment. Like what I got here on the side of this vest. This is actually a view loader pod pack that I got several years ago at Walmart when I first started. I was able to successfully rig it into the Molly vest using nothing more than an Alice to Molly adapter and a pair of Alice clips. I'm going to show you how to set one up. Give me one moment as I rig it up. Alright, now we're back and what we're going to be doing is rigging this LC2 pod pack for use with this Alice Tamale adapter. Now these Alice Tamale adapters are a very nice thing. They were designed during the early days of the Molly program when they were being introduced into the military. They were originally developed for the Alice system, so that way you could take your clips, run it in here, and fit any of your mag pouches, your canteens, and make your older Alice gear compliant with the new Molly system. Now, for our intents and purposes, we're going to be doing it on an LC on one of these pod packs to make it Molly compliant. Now, I already rigged up the clips. But this is going to be a fast thing, so as you can see, just slide it in, lock it in place. Beauty about these Alice clips are they can be used on just about anything. I've seen some players actually take the Alice gear and clip it directly into the Alice webbing. I would seriously advise against that because the weight of the clips and how narrow they are, they will eventually air the PALS webbing on the Molly vest. Now, moving on, it's in the belt loop, locking in place. And for the second one, it's going to be a little harder. You got to come in at an opposite angle from your first one. Just slip it through. And also lock it down. Make sure if you're using the brand new Alice clips that they lock in right. And now this one pod pack is Molly compliant. You can still weave it in and it works perfectly. And now we're going to move on to something a little more not amp ball related, but the same concept for using Alice Tamale adapters for adapting other non Molly items. Give me one moment. Okay, this is more of a non paintball related subject, but it's in the same field as using the Alice Tamale adapters for non Molly items. Now, I'm a big knife collector. I collect Bowie knives, I'll collect tack knives, anything like that, that can be used for hunting, survival, or anything. I'm actually a little bit of a knife connoisseur to some extent, but right now, I've got your basic Winchester Bowie knife that I got for Christmas a couple years back. Now, I carried this knife on me on a hunting trip once, and I gotta say, I didn't catch anything, but you gotta admit, this is a perfect knife. Bowie knives have a nice long history. They've been used for hunting, they've been used for survival. 
They've even been used in combat. The first use of a Bowie knife in combat was during the war with Mexico. And I also believe that the Battle of the Alamo. Bowie knives were also carried by Theodore Roosevelt's Rough Riders when they went up San Juan Hill. But aside from that, we'll be moving on. Now, the belt loop on this knife, while on the scabbard, is made to go on almost any belt out there, even military issue. But this thing wasn't exactly made to be modular. It's got limited mounting capabilities. Now similar knives like this, particularly marine issue K bars, a lot of guys during Vietnam and onward that were using the old Alice gear, they would actually ape this knife inverted onto the suspenders of their Alice rigs so that way the knife was riding high like this makes it easy to pull out especially when you lock up with somebody in the hand to hand fight so with that being said I'm actually going to show you how to make this molly compliant what you do is you take two of these Alice Tamale adapters. You leave one alone and just slide it through the belt loop. Now with it configured like this, this will provide a nice little securing base. You can actually rig it as is like this onto a battle belt using the Alice webbing on that Molly battle belt and it will hold up perfect but if you want to be a little more creative and have this thing rigged up onto a vest what you'll have to do with a second Alice Tamale adapter is modify it and that entails slicing away at the stitching that would be going down the middle of this thing so that way you have a nice open platform that way you can just slide this right onto the scabbard. Now the purpose of this on the vest setup is to make this thing more stable. Give me a minute as I set this thing up and I'll explain everything. Alright, now we're back. As you can see, I pull out my old operative vest to demonstrate the knife scabbard modification. As you can see, this knife isn't going anywhere. The second Alice Tamale adapter is holding the blade itself secured to the vest as well as the top one that is hooked through the belt loop of the scabbard. As you can see I can easily pull my knife if I need it and because I'm a lefty I usually keep it here in this particular configuration so that way let's say I'm hunting something that can hunt you like bears, wildcats, anything like that. If you need to use something up close and personal, you've got this right here. You can easily pull it out and go to work. But this idea you can also use on K-Bar knives. You can use on any type of fixed blade knife. And this way you have it on a gear rig easy access, no bullshit, and the cool thing is these Alice Tamale adapters are dirt cheap. You can get a set of like 10 of these for 10 or 20 dollars at your local military surplus or on eBay. That's pretty much the gist of this one, so give me a minute and I'll get back with our final improvised kit. And this time, breaking out the big guns. Alright, back now. As you can see, I've got my Army Alpha Black hooked up to a remote line. And what's on my back is the improvised setup. Now as you can see, I took a old hydration carrier that I got in an Army Navy a couple years ago when I was setting up one of my vests. And I've outfitted it with pods air tank, everything like that, and now 
I'm actually going to break this thing down and show you how it's set up. Okay, now I've got the backpack or hydration system set up and rigged up as an improvised salt pack. Now, I got these side straps right here that I was easily able to slip on my old interlock 140 round 2 plus 1 pouches. Got the same over here. And as I remove one of the pouches, I'll be able to give you a better showing on the pack without it. As you can see, slide the pouch off. And that's all it really is. These side straps here are being used to hold the 140 round pod pack in. You got a nice little zipper compartment. You can use it for any type of equipment. Maybe a small little first aid pouch or additional equipment. The main pocket here, which is connected by a pair of double zippers, I'm using it to hold a 24 ounce air tank, though you can't put an HPA tank in here. It's held in, it's practically in here on its own, nothing holding it in place with the 32 degree remote line set up. Plus you also have the pouch back here so you can run your hydration line, run the hydration line up through one of these little loops. So that way you're also able to keep yourself hydrated on the field. Now moving on to the sides, the belt, the little loops here that are rigged to the waist strap, I actually hooked on the old LC2 ammo pouch, though it's also possible to hook in your molly pouches, depending upon what type they are and for how many pods. So. This allows you to actually have additional ammo on hand. If you need it, everything is within easy access. If you need to get to additional gear that's in other pouches, you can easily take it on and off. And with that, this is probably one of the best improvised setups I could cook up on short notice. But if you're looking for a good hydration platform to use this particular style setup. Look for something like the WFS gear. You can I found this at my local Army Navy. Or you can easily find these on eBay. I know there are a lot of military ones. They also come in camo if you can find them. Check your local military surplus, eBay, or any outdoor store. And you should be able to find a good one. Now you can catch a written version of this at outerheavenpaintball.blogspot.com. I will be posting a link in the description to this video. This is Big Boss, and I'm out of here.